is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not, it will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm, Psalm 46, will read responsibly by whole verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, and breaks the bow, and shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I, the Lord of hosts, the God, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is from the third chapter of Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood and effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, by the law of faith. For what we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said,
said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. We're out of order. <laughs> Don't want me to start on page two, do you? All right. Anyway. <laughs> so after worship one day, a, a little boy said to the pastor, when I grow up, I'm going to give you some money. The pastor said, well, thank you, but what made you think of giving me money? And the little boy said, well, my daddy says that you're one of the poorest preachers we've ever had. Okay, you can laugh at that. But hopefully you don't think that with me. All right, <laughs> with the risk of that joke in mind, I'm going to speak about spiritual needs. And one of our spiritual needs is growing in faith. In the words of Peter Pan, <laughs> I won't grow up. Not a penny will I pinch. I will never grow a mustache or a fraction of an inch. Because growing up is awfuler than all the awful things that ever were. I will never grow up, never grow up, never grow up. Not me. Some people are like Peter Pan when it comes to faith. We don't want to grow up. We're comfortable right where we are. In fact, we don't know why anyone would want us to change at all. Like Peter Pan, we express our desire to just stay where we are. There was a group of Peter Pans in the Bible in the New Testament, we know them as the Pharisees. The Pharisees did not want to grow anymore. They are an example of frozen spiritual development. <laughs> they were so convinced that they had all of the answers that they sort of closed their hearts to God. I have seen people from age 20 to 60 acting like they were still in their cribs. Haven't we all seen people that just act like little children? I've occasionally been there myself, <laughs> sort of stuck. <laughs> we might actually want to grow up and have the urgent need to feel like we are growing in our faith and intellectually and emotionally and spiritually. We do want to mature and learn and expand our faith. I mean, we all know ignorance is not bliss. Immaturity is not attractive. Peter Pan may think it's wonderful, but Wendy and her brothers, after spending time with Peter, discovered differently. When we are growing in faith, we rejoice knowing that we are free. In Jesus' words, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Reformation proclaimed three major principles. The first was justification by grace through faith. The second, authority of the scriptures. 
And the third, the universal priesthood of all believers. Looking at the first of these, that by God's grace in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, cleansed, healed, made free, made perfect and sinless in Christ. We are justified, we are made right with God through the cross of Christ. God's Son has made us free. When the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. We also rejoice knowing and feeling that we are free to grow. We're either trees or fence posts. You can take a tree and put it in the ground and it begins to grow. When you put a fence post in the ground, it begins to rot and decay. We are trees or we are fence posts. As a pastor, it has been my delight to see people grow like trees. Unfortunately, I've also had to witness the sadness of watching fence posts decay people losing their mission in, in life, and so they just do nothing. They stay the same. Some faith development theorists see the Christian believer going through various stages and levels of maturity in life. One uses the analogy, again, of a tree. We like growing things, right? A tree that only has one ring is still a tree, is it not? It's a complete tree. It is every bit a tree as a tree that has a hundred rings. The same is true of faith. A tree grows one ring at a time, gradually. And that's the way faith works as well. It depends on how, on your environment and your nourishment, what you are doing to nourish that faith that will help it to grow. So we can rejoice knowing that we are free to grow, free to mature. I'll never forget watching two boys arguing. One brother shouted to the other, shut up! Now, Saying shut up was not allowed, nor was it ever said in the house I grew up in. Mother considered that close to profanity. (laughs) So my ears were a little shocked when I heard the one boy shout that out. But the other says back to him, I don't shut up, I grow up. And when I look at you, I throw up. (laughs) I love boys. Like, they they just... (laughs) Boys have a way of saying things, don't they? Yeah. I think they have to find every excuse to put something yucky in it. (laughs) God calls us to maturity in our newfound freedom. Maybe, Maybe we're like naked crabs. Like when you go to the seashore, every pool left by the tide has those little crabs in it. Little ones that sort of scuttle sideways, right? Squeeze under rocks, peek out at you. Occasionally, they venture out, try to nibble on your toe. Now and then, you see bigger crabs in those deeper and safer pools of water. With great majesty, they sort of wave their huge claws at you, warning you to stay clear of them. But walk down the beach, There are shells of crabs lying or washed up by the waves. Some are from crabs that have died, but others are just simply discarded. A dwelling too small for its growing occupant. That's how crabs get bigger, right? When their shells get too tight, they split the shell open and then discard it and grow a new one. I've never talked to a crab, but I can imagine that that process of splitting open a shell 
has to be somewhat painful. I'm sure that until they grow a new shell, they feel terribly defenseless and vulnerable. They're literally naked. That's how we feel sometimes when we have to crack open our shells. Our shells aren't visible like the crabs, but our shells are there. Our shells are formed by years of habit, shells that protect us from other people, shells that are the roles that we play as parents or children or bosses or spouses. Every now and then, we crack our shells open and emerge into a new world, quivering and defenseless. Teenagers do it as they become adults. No wonder teenagers get so crabby, right? Our country did it in the 60s when we took on race and wars. I wonder sometimes if our country isn't going through a bit of that again. Adults do it when they learn to quit running their children's lives or when they lose jobs or a spouse dies or you lose a home in a fire or the list can go on and on. But we are free to grow up and to bear fruit by the grace of God. Norman and his wife were a part of a group that consisted of Lutheran and Catholic couples. They would meet in homes and discuss faith, both their similarities and their differences, and then they would pray together. One night, Norman said, I always prayed for the conversion of my Lutheran wife to Catholicism. And now I pray a different prayer, a prayer for growth and deeper understanding in our common faith. <laughs> it's a simple example of growing and maturing. The thing is, is that God never leaves us as God finds us. God never leaves us as God finds us. We are changing by the grace of God and the movement of the Holy Spirit. God is maturing us. We're not today what we were yesterday, nor what we will be tomorrow. So we celebrate. We are free. God's Son has made us free. We should celebrate that. Be happy about that. We are free to grow, free to grow up in Christ. Amen.